Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back. Watch this workflow happen. The workflow is actually running. Okay. Plan is happening again and the apply just took place and test bucket has been created. This workflow happened literally with no AWS keys involved. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to create this Terraform workflow. Let me share my screen. Let's get started. All right. Here's my screen. Before we get started, I'm going to show you the overall architecture of what we are about to create. So there's two sides to this. One is what's happening on AWS and what's happening on GitHub. GitHub is going to be where our code is sitting, our Terraform and GitHub action, and the authentication is happening in the middle between IAM on AWS and OpenID connect connection that's sent to it. And on the AWS side, other than the IAM uh, identity provider bit, we're also having a role and basically our GitHub action or our GitHub repository will assume this role and it can do whatever it wants on AWS. But as long as we have given it permission to do. So it can update the S3 file, which is going to be our uh, Terraform state sitting in, Terraform backend sitting in, or you could create like new S3 buckets. For us, as an example, we're going to create a new S3 bucket and also we're going to be updating the state file and we're going to do this using github actions and we're going to be making a pull request to show what part of the workflow is ran inside the pull request and what part of it is ran after we are uh, merging to main branch so this is the whole uh documentation around it which i've created i'm going to put a link for this in the description so you can follow along as well so first thing we're going to do is we're going to create that backhand s3 bucket to go here and the directory buckets create a bucket directory is fine actually we want, it, we want it for general purposes so bucket name what i'm going to do is that i'm going to copy the bucket name in here it makes sense for it to be the same as the code because i don't have to cut update the code anymore and what i want over here obviously we don't want any public access and this has been um enabled by default in the past it was not enabled by default so there was a lot of things uh incidents happening because of it and we're going to enable version control because it's good for us to have that maybe we want to see an older version of our uh, s3 state it would give us access to that encryption is already enabled in this bucket again it's by default in the past it wasn't so i'm going to create the bucket and here we go. We have the bucket right here. Next thing we need from the architecture itself, we can see we need that role or we need that we need that role. Also, we need the identity provider added. We can trust what's coming from GitHub. So for that, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to go to the IAM on AWS. And I, what I want to do is that I want to add a new identity provider for our GitHub. And this is going to be open ID connect connection. The URL, I literally got that from GitHub uh, documentation page. I'm going to copy that, uh, paste that right here. And on our audience is going to be the STS, uh, Amazon, AWS.com uh, audience. We're going to create the provider right now. So we have the provider. Going back to the diagram, we have the provider. And we have the S3 bucket for our state file. Next thing we need is the role that GitHub Actions or our repository is going to be assuming. So for that, I'm going to go back to IAM. I'm going to go to roles, create a new role. It's going to be a web identity for us. And the identity provider is the one that we literally just created, which is Actions GitHub. And the audience for it is going to be the same one that we selected over there when we did the identity provider. The organization, for me, this is a personal GitHub account, so it's not an organization. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to copy the name of my GitHub account, which is created for this uh, YouTube channel, basically. And the repository that we wanted for, it's good to specify repository. It's, it will be making more secure. It's going to be this one right here. It's a name right here. Terraform test uh, open ID connect. This is it. Branch for now, we're not going to include anything. Or oh, let me get rid of this. So there's no errors showing for us. I want to show sure there's no space because it's important for it to not have any space. It might confuse it with another repository that might have a similar name. And that looks good for now. That also creates our trust policy, by the way. 
uh, permissions. We don't want to give it permissions for now. So I'm going to go next. Test role. And after that, it's basically going to be a trust policy. We're saying we trust the connections that are coming from this repo and uh, this organization, which is a GitHub account and this repo. So we're saying trust connections that are coming from here. So uh, we're going to create create the role and I'm going to search for a test role right here uh, just to add the permissions as well. We have the trust policy here. So we are saying we trust the repository and the account to use this role. But what we need is an actual permission, what we want this role to be able to do, right? So I'm going to add inline policy for it. I'm going to go to JSON. And in here, I'm just going to copy it from the documentation. What we have, the trust policy, we have it already. So that one is fine. But this is the example policy that we're going to copy paste right here. I'm going to delete all of that and paste it right here. So what we want is that we want to be able to put object, get object, delete object, list bucket uh, only for this resource, basically the S3 state bucket that we created earlier. And also we want to be able to do whatever we want with this bucket right here. This is the bucket that hasn't been created yet, but when our workflow is running or when it's run, finished running, that's when it's created and we have full control over it. Uh, so that hasn't been created yet, but that has been created for our state. I'm going to click on next, create policy. Nice. I think it all looks good. Policy, I'm just going to call it a test uh, policy for now. Create the policy. We have it. So we have our trust relationship uh, and also we have our permission. Those are the two things we need for the role to be able to assume it. And then after that, it has the permission to create stuff and edit stuff. Um, so next thing I want to do is that I want to go through the Terraform bit. For that, I'm going to be cloning this repository and I'm going to be going through what exactly is happening on the Terraform side. The side that we're looking at now, we're going to be looking at now is this side right here, the Terraform, the GitHub action. We went through this bit, now we're going through this bit. Okay, so let's get started. I'm just going to be cloning this and uh, copy the link i'm going to open my visual studio code and here i'm going to clone the repository from the url i'm going to put it in my documents uh, folder for now and i'm going to open it in a new window which is going to be easier for us to see let me make it the right size and we can see it properly so this is basically our github repository is a very simple uh, terraform uh, setup for us to just demonstrate that our open id connect connection and our github action is working properly so i'm going to go through the files one by one readme is the same readme that we saw in the browser earlier provider is obviously going to be aws because this whole setup is on aws our main.tf this is where we're going to be creating a test bucket using this workflow, right? So this bucket doesn't exist. The bucket we created earlier, that was just for the Terraform state. So if I go to S3 and do a refresh, uh, you will see this is the Terraform state bucket, which is in our backend. That's where our state bucket is going to be sitting. But as a demonstration, I want to create this bucket using the workflow. This is our get ignore. So a bunch of stuff that we don't want it to be pushed to get. It's probably not a good idea to push these things to get. So I've used the template to add this in. And the next thing is our uh, YAML file, which is our GitHub action file that we have. And in here, I'm just going to explain briefly what this github action is and what each part of it does so the name of it obviously is plan and apply terraform because both terraform plan and apply is going to be happening using the same github action uh, i'm going to show you how that exactly works in the bottom of the github um, action and the permissions we want is obviously write and content we want to be able to read it and in the pull request on the write as well why because i'm going to be making a comment during the pull request which shows 
how many resources are being updated, created, and deleted. This will help us a lot in the long run because whoever is reviewing our pull requests could easily see what's happening. It's very useful. So next thing we want to do is that uh, we want to check out of the branch that we have, Configurative is Credentials. That's what it's named as. But all I'm doing is that I'm going to be putting a secret, which is not a credential. It's just the role address because it does have our AWS account ID in there. What I have in there, I'll show you what it is. It's literally, uh, if I go to roles again, uh, role, uh, it's called test role, is this thing right here. It's just the R. That's all we have in here. And after that, AWS region, uh, where we're going to be assuming it from. And after we assume it, we can do Terraform uh, setup, Terraform initiate, and then Terraform format check. That's good because it makes the code just clean. Everyone has the same format on it. And if it's not, uh, the person hasn't done Terraform FMT, we'll see it in the pull request before it's being actually pushed to the main. And Terraform Validate is a good one too, Terraform Plan. But we're doing a, something a bit different on the Terraform Plan. We're saving it to a T plan TXT, like a temporary file. What, why we're doing that is because of the same thing I mentioned before. We want to be extracting from there what's going to be updated, what's going to be created, and what's going to be um, deleted. You will, it will become more clear when you see it on a pull request. I'm going to show it to you on a pull request, but this is all that is for creating that summary comment. And after that, if it failed, we don't want it to proceed to apply. Also, we have a condition on the apply, which is saying that it has to be a push and it has to be pushed only to the main. Why are we doing this? Because on the other branches, we do not want to do Terraform apply. We only want to do Terraform apply on the main because we want it to be reviewed by someone beforehand. So I did mention reviewing, right? And how do we make sure that exactly that's exactly into effect or taking place? I'll show you. If I go to the documentation and scroll down, there's a section in here to do with um, enabling uh, GitHub branch protection. So this is what's going to help us enforce those things by enabling these settings right here. Require pull request before merging. So we don't want people to be just pushing in domain without a pull request. And we would require approval on the pull request. We don't want people to just be able to uh, approve their own pull request. We want someone else to do it. However, in this demonstration, I'm doing it myself. I'm bypassing that rule because there's no one else except me to approve my pull request. And a bunch of other ones uh, which are very useful. All of these things are documented here. You can have a look. I'm going to show you where to exactly add these. So if I go to the settings on my GitHub repository, and I go to branches, I go to edit. And here I'm saying this is going to be a rule for the main branch. And these are the places that I'm going to be taking is the same options that I've explained in the documentation. You can go through all of them. Require sign commits. That's like one of my favorites. We'll know exactly uh, where find where it's coming from when a uh, commit is being made. So those are really good. So I think we're pretty much ready to make like a PR to see how the workflow exactly works. So I'm going to go back to my uh, Visual Studio code. And I'm going to create a new branch right here. And I'm going to be calling it a uh, test uh, branch. Hopefully that branch is not already taken. Uh, test branch. Yes, we are on the test branch. And in here, I just want to make it make a very silly quick change, like a space in here. So GitHub will recognize we're actually making a change. And in here, we're going to make a commit. This is like one of my favorite things, like new features about the AI on Visual Studio Code that I hated doing comments for my commits. And I, sometimes I can't think of something to do. So when you press that, it will automatically create like a com uh, comment. So it makes it much clear, cleaner in the history. So I'm going to make the commit and do a publish branch. 
And next thing I'm going to do is I want to create a pull request. I can press this button or this button up here. I'm going to press it, this one. And it's creating a pull request for us. Uh, pull request exists for this branch. It doesn't matter. I'm going to create it anyways. And this is it. We have created a pull request. It's the seventh one right here. Uh, let's go check it out on the actual GitHub uh, page. I like the view from there better. So I'm going to paste it right here. And in here, we can see the workflow was ran. If I do go into the checks, we can see plan apply. It was ran. It was ran very quickly because there was no... Uh, changes happening also because I had created the pull request beforehand. And in here, we can see what it's trying to do. It's trying to create a new S3 bucket calling test bucket, AMR test bucket. And I can, you can see, if I go back to S3, this bucket does not exist yet. And it's showing us that it's going to be creating that one. The whole uh, comment section I was talking about on GitHub Action is this part. I really like it. Someone, someone who wants to review this, it's so easy for them to see this. Oh, you're creating one thing, and I can see the plan. I can see what you're playing, uh, what you're creating, what changes you're making, or what exact configurations you're having. And in here, if you want to see the full workflow, right, you can click on this, and you can see it. This is the same thing that we went through. It did a validate, it did a initiate, it did all of those things, but it skipped Terraform Apply. Because why? We don't want to be, do, be doing Terraform Apply and doing pull requests. We want to do it after it's merged in. So I'm going to go back again. And it's not letting me do it because it wants someone to review it, but I'm going to be bypassing this because there's no one else except me in here to like um, approve this. It would have been good to have someone, a reviewer, to add in here to approve it. So you will see as soon as they approve it, then you can, then this button basically becomes green and then you can do it. But for now, because there's no one here, I'm just going to be doing it anyways. Uh, bypass merge, confirm bypass. You can also enable settings, even admins couldn't bypass. But obviously it would kill this demonstration, so I didn't do it. So if I go to my pull request, that thing is gone because it deleted, gets deleted automatically for the GitHub uh, um, configurations that we have, which I've explained in the documentation. And we can see the workflow is actually running, okay? Plan is happening again. It's always good to do a plan before I apply. And it's saying uh, there's no like commenting because this is not a pull request. And also it hasn't failed. And the apply just took place and all of this happened with no AWS credentials involved. The only GitHub secret we had was the ARN, which I can show you right here. Secret, action, it was just the ARN, ARN, the address of the role. And if we go in here, do a refresh, we can see right here, our test bucket has been created. So this is how you simply create a workflow, full-on workflow, Terraform workflow from start to finish on AWS. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you want more videos like this, please like and subscribe.